Okay, so let's go and continue to our quest to understand how we can understand polymer coil. And this is a, you know, uh, we talked about characteristic ratio, talked about statistical segment lengths. Now we talk about something called the Kuhn lengths and or some also known as a persistent length. So actually you can Im imagine this is uh, something that as the name suggests, it, somebody has con suggested this concept about chain rigidity, and the person is actually the, the Kuhn. So uh, the symbol for Kuhn lengths, many people are using it, but let's just say we are going to use length scale with a subscript K. And also the persistent length is length scale with a P, it's a persistent length. Okay? Uh, the concept about Kuhn length and the persistent length is essentially two times the persistent length is a Kuhn length, and so that's the concept. And we're going to talk about some concept of the persistent length, which is a quite uh, interesting numbers to know. Okay, and if you're looking at the, once again this a table that we talked about characteristic ratio, pers uh, then statistical segment length, and now finally the LP, which is a persistent length. And persistent lengths can be shown up here for a bunch of different polymer, which is uh, essentially another representation of chain uh, rigidity or flexibilities. And uh, for some reason, the persistent length is very widely used in biochemistry field and biochemical macromolecules, such as uh, DNAs and the proteins, and uh, they are using the persistent length for DNA is very, very substantially large. And uh, for some reason, the biomacromolecules uh, uh, feel that people are, uh, people are using molecules. But let's, let's just talk about what's, what's the persistent length or Kuhn length are shown up here. So persistent length uh, is uh, it actually can be shown as a, the concept. Say, okay, if I have this poly, uh, bond vector L1 pointing it, and then I'm going to use a little bit more faint colors, and this one can take any position, this one can take any positions, they can take any positions they want, but uh, on the average, how much the correlation that the first bond vector is be being maintained, this is the second vector, this is the third vector, and eventually you are going to lose your correlations. So this first vector persists to exist uh, towards the certain lengths, and that's what we call, let's just call it as a persistent length. Right. So the mathematically, this is actually concept. This is a concept, but mathematically, this is a pretty uh, easy quantity to quantify because you just want to know the correlation between L1 multiplied by bunch of different uh, L2, L3. So you just want to looking at the bonds of everything that you have seen here so far that we have in existing in the, in the polymer chain until the last bond. Right? So you're going to look at that and then what's an average correlation between these two. So uh, this is the same thing as the one that uh, we can see, okay, the, this is the same as uh, First one, second one, until the last one. And as you recall, uh, you know, if this is a totally flexible chain, there is no correlation, so this will be gone, and it will be something, uh, the persistent length is same as your L, L square. So, um, so I, I want to, okay, so let me get that, and then I want to also really define a uh, little bit better. So, so this is a concept, now to, to be actually, to be, a, has the same unit, uh, this is an actual length times length, so what I need to have is 
I have to normalize the whole thing by L, right? So the whole thing by 1 over L, and let me just call that as LP, persistent lens. Okay, so this is a this is a concept, and then then you can you can find out what what will be the value uh, on doing this. And uh, the persistent length, the higher the the persistent length it is, more rigid chain. Right? So I can I can do that. Uh, and then I remember the I also just briefly introduced about that. Uh, there is a cone length, which is a two times a persistent length. So you can think about very you know in a simple way. This is a vector that how much this correlation persists to exist, and and then at the length scale of the LP from the L, that is your persistent length. And then this means that at the position of the bond vector here. They can they are free to choose any rotations that, that they want, right? So they have no correlation whatsoever. That means in a way, in a naive way, the bond start to bend is on 90 degrees. Okay. At uh, at the length scale persistent length. Okay. So they are free to bend at the length scale of persistent length. Uh, but what what that means is also if you go further. They can they can actually go back. They can uh, not not only bend. They can fall back to 180 degrees, which is uh, if you double the length two times LP, there will be a cone length. Okay, so that's a that's a sort of the graphical concept uh, that you can have at the same time. And the cone length is as the person shown up here. It is actually uh, has a person that who originally suggests this idea that. Okay, I think the chains are has a end-to-end -end distance, and uh, the end-to-end -end distance of the chain divided by L should be a Kuhn length. He's the one who suggests this. Uh, this end-to-end -end distance portion contains a chain rigidity. And then what he put it in is, is the chain rigidity divided by L, and the L here is what we call contour length. It is a conceptual length, and if you remember what the contour length is, if I, if I have a polymer chain, have a zigzag carbon-carbon bond, and my earlier lectures in the video, say, okay, this is a length along this polymer chain. That's a contour length. So therefore, the contour length L is just nothing but n times L. So that's a very simple concept to combine together here. Okay, so let's let's go go down here to actually kind of tidy it up, or uh, the in concept that I introduced here. Okay, uh, the Kuhn length is a the the person that who suggested that well that's a if you know how to measure, there is something called end-to-end -end distance um, uh, square, uh, and then divide by L. That will be a cone, cone length. And then we can carry on this uh, this questions here. So remember that this is a uh, infinity n L square. Okay? Remember that. So that's uh, using the characteristic ratio. I'm going to correlate that. And then the that this is a L is a contour length, and as I as I just mentioned before, L is just simply counting the number of bonds, uh, and then just um, bond length itself. That's a contour length. So this is a N L, right? So this nicely come comes around now is uh, if you look at the, the math, this goes away, and that goes away. And you ended up cone length is uh, c infinity times l. So characteristic times l, which is uh, typically the the average bond length in the repeating unit, and the mo most polymer polyethylene polystyrene. This is just the carbon carbon bonds, 1.4 angstrom. So you can look up the uh, characteristic ratio of c infinity. 
and then you can calculate cone lengths here. And the cone length, once again, is on 180 degrees. So cone length is uh, twice as uh, LP. So therefore, is the persistent length that's shown in the table is just uh, nothing but half times of cone length, which is uh, uh, C infinity divided by 2 times uh, L. So you can essentially convert this one pointing back and forth. Right? So that, that's how you, you see this persistent length, which is, uh, uh, can be derived from the C infinity. And depending on how, you, how many bonds in the repeating units, you will have a different statistical segment length. Right? So this is how uh, we can describe these different quantities. Thank you.